morning, Quad Captor 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Prop Wash. Prop Wash was the first to say first in one of my recent videos, and this one's this shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quad Captor 101 here, and I have a review of another meat drone for you uh, beginner flyers out there. This is the KF Plan KF616 drone. Now, looking at the KF616, we see it is another one of these little folding drones, highly portable. As you can see here, you can fold up all the, each of the arms and put it in your carrying case that comes with this, by the way. A nice carrying case for your drone and its accessories. And take it with you just about anywhere to go fly it. Now, let's mention this right now. This is a budget drone. This is uh, runs in the $30 to $40 price range. In a $30 to $40 price range, don't expect to get a cinematic drone. Okay, it's not going to happen, folks. You're not going to get 4K camera on a $30 drone. The 4K camera itself is going to cost at least that, if not double that. So, you know, it's coming in with this real, realistic expectations, and you'll like this drone. Um, you come in with this with unrealistic expectations, and you probably dislike this drone. Okay, you're not going to go flying FPV with this. You're not going to be a cinematographer with this. You're just going to learn to fly a drone with this. That's its purpose. Now let's talk about other things about it. Um, it weighs 100 grams, folks. That means this does not require registration in most countries. However, it does have cameras on it. It has two cameras, actually. One front camera and one belly camera. So there are some countries that do require you to register drones with a camera. So keep that in mind, folks. Um, most countries do not require this to be registered since it's only 100 grams, under 250 grams. But there are some that do because of the cameras. Now, one thing special about it. Notice this device on the top of the drone. This is the obstacle avoidance system, okay? It has an emitter, an infrared emitter. That's this one light on the top here. And it has detectors on each of the four faces of this uh, rectangle for detecting the emitter's infrared light bouncing off of walls or objects. And then it comes back and hits these detectors. And the drone detects that and will try to avoid hitting walls and other objects. Um, this works kind of. Don't expect it to be, you know, perfect, okay? But it should keep you out of trouble for most instances, okay, with this obstacle avoidance system. Other things about it, it also has altitude hold control so that the drone will automatically maintain its flight. It has one key return, and all one key return is, folks, is you press the button and the drone will fly the exact opposite direction that it was pointed at takeoff. Now, don't expect that to be uh, returned to home and landing. It is not. All this does with one key return is fly the exact opposite direction it was pointed at takeoff. It may come back to you if you keep it in front of you, but again, it may fly away from you, so don't depend on that one key return. Okay, just trying to give you a heads up there. It also has headless mode. I'll demonstrate that. That enables the drone to fly in any orientation with, and you don't have to worry about the front and back. You just push forward and it'll, it'll fly in the direction it was pointed at takeoff forward back in the opposite direction, right and left. I'll demonstrate that again, uh, particularly when we go downstairs to fly this. This also has flip control, folks. You press a button on the controller and move this right stick and the drone will actually do a roll and forward flips or back flips. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Um, those are fun for beginner flyers to play around with. But keep in mind, folks, uh, flips do stress the motors on this. Okay, these, these are tiny little brushed motors. And uh, you do too many flips, you will burn out a motor. So keep those limited, maybe one or two a flight, uh, allowing at least a 15-minute cooldown period between flights to uh, improve the longevity of your motors. So just giving you a heads up there on motors. Okay, I already mentioned the obstacle avoidance, the folding arms, and I just mentioned the brushless six. 716 motors. These are 716 cordless motors, by the way, folks. So if you do need to get a replacement, you have to remove that little screw there and pop it out and replace it with a 716 motor. Those are widely available on eBay, on Amazon. I don't know about Amazon, but eBay, I, I see them all the time. Just do a Google search for 716 cordless motor and you will find replacement motors for this. Um, it is powered by this little 3. Well, it's a 3.7 volt battery. This is advertised as 2,000 milliamp per hour battery. That is not true. <laughs> I can just look in there right now. This is about a 500 milliamp per hour inside this. I think they were planning to uh, put a 2,000 milliamp per hour. In fact, the um, 
photos that I see for this battery on the advertisement show this whole uh, battery bay filled with a big battery in there. But that's not what came out in the final production run, folks. They replaced it with a, uh, I'm guessing this is about 500 milliamp hour, as I said. Can I see? Oh. It says 2,000 milliamp hour on it. It does it. I can see that. But that is not a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. That's, um, it's printed 2,000 milliamp hour, but 2,000 milliamp hour batteries are big. Okay, especially in 3.7 volts, and that can't be. That just can't be. <laughs> just saying that right now. Okay, um, I mentioned the cameras. Let's talk about these cameras. I'm going to put the battery back in there. Um, again, you get two two cameras, a forward-facing one. You can tilt this lens up or down manually. Okay, there's no remote control, um, but you can manually tilt this lens up or down. And this belly camera always looks down. Um, this is not an optical flow sensor. Uh, I was hoping this would be an optical flow, but it's not. Um, it's just there to give you another view directly beneath the belly of the drone if you want to take a photo Looking downward from the drone, you can, or photo or video, looking downward from the drone using this sensor on the belly of it. Um, the resolution of these, now it's advertised as a 6K camera. Again, don't expect 6K, 4K, or any high resolution camera in the $30 to $40 price range drone. You're not going to get it. Even if they say it's there, it's not true. Okay. Um, this actually produces both photos and videos. I, I've checked them both. Um, the resolution of those photos and videos is 2048 by 1080p. Um, the videos are at 20 frames per second. Now, looking at those photos and videos, um, the sensor itself looks like it's much lower resolution sensor. I'm guessing around 720p. And the app that's used with this drone interpolates that, enlarges it, to that uh, higher resolution of 2048 by 1080p. But again, it's not very high quality video. It's not meant to be in a $30 to $40 drone. Again, it's just to give you a taste of uh, video, in-flight video. You'll be able to see yourself on the ground and your house from up, up in the sky. But again, um, not professional quality video by any means with this uh, little cheap drone, okay? Um, the v this you can view the in-flight video on your phone using the app that comes with this, and that's the RC FPV app available on Google Play and iTunes. Um, there are other features that that app does. I think there's even a little follow me, rudimentary follow me that you draw, but don't, don't expect those to work very well either since this is not a GPS drone, a GPS um, drone with uh, waypoint capability. This is not, okay. This, you, you know, with the... Uh, uh, auto fly capability, you just draw a little line on the screen and the drone will fly off in that general direction for a few feet. Again, it's just a little, give you a taste of uh, automatic control using your phone. But with that app, RCFPV app, again, you will be able to view the video uh, from this drone on your phone. It uses regular 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi to do such. Uh, transmitting that video to your phone over 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, but because of that, there will be some interference with the Wi-Fi with the controller, since this controller also operates on 2.4 gigahertz. So expect ranges because of that interference. Um, FPV video ranges around 30 meters and control range up to about 100 meters, I'm guessing. We'll see when we take it out in my front yard there and fly it out there, see how well the uh, video FPV looks outdoors when we go fly. Now what do you get in the box with this particular drone? You get the instructions in Chinese and English. They're reasonably good instructions. I was able to follow it. You also get instructions for the app um, right here along with a URL or um, QR code that you can um, click on with your phone and it will take you to the Google Play or uh, Apple uh, version of this. I recommend or you can just go on Google Play <laughs> And look for RCFPV and you'll find that app there. Other things you get, you get the box, nice little box for the drone. And inside that box comes the carrying case. And again, nice little carrying case for the drone and its accessories. You get the drone. You get a screwdriver along with four spare uh, propellers for the drone. And the screwdriver is for removing these propellers by 
There's little screws in the heads of each one of these uh, rotors, so that's how you remove them. You get uh, one, two, or three batteries, depending on which version you buy. I think the, the cheapest version is around $33 with one battery, and the most expensive is around $40 with three batteries. Um, you get a charger for those batteries. Notice it has a little Reddit JST connector. So um, I have been able to charge these on my professional charger, <laughs> my um, hobby grade charger downstairs using that red JST connector. So if you don't want to use this, you can, but you should be able to find replacements of these also if you break this particular charger. Um, you get a set of prop guards. These are for indoor flying mainly. In fact, I will install these. I'm going to show you. They're very easy to install <laughs> and uninstall. These Notice these two little holes on the base of the motor. And they line up with these two little holes or two little pins on the prop guard. And you just snap it on like so. Let me see if I can line them up here so I see what I'm doing here. Put my glasses on. It's kind of hard, but there we go. There's one of them installed. So they go on pretty easily, slide on easily, and they pop off just as easily. So, But again, I use these for indoor flying. I do not recommend them outdoors because prop guards always end up as hooks, ornament hooks. And your drone will become a Christmas tree ornament if you fly outdoors and end up in a tree. So don't put take them or don't put them on outdoors. They also mess up the uh, uh, flight capability of the drone. You know the the efficiency of the propellers if you put these on. So um, if you want to fly longer periods, more maneuverable, take them off outdoors. Okay. And finally, let's talk about the controller. You get this controller. It is powered by I believe it's three triple yeah I was right three AAA batteries. That go in there and notice the dollar store batteries that I use. But uh, let's talk about the buttons on this controller. Um, they are well labeled, I gotta say. This is your rates button. You've got beginner, intermediate, and expert rate for uh, different flying speeds of the drone. You have a flip button. You press this button and then move the right control stick and it will tell which the drone which direction to flip. The sticks are, this is mode 2 controller, so this is throttle, this is yaw, this is pitch, and this is roll. The buttons on the left side here. This is automatic takeoff button here, automatic landing button here. You can turn the lights off on the drone by a quick press of this button here, or hold this button down for three seconds, and it enters into headless mode, if I remember correctly. Yeah, headless mode. Um, you can take a photo by pressing quick press of this button here, or start the video by pressing this a long press of this button. Um, remember to stop that video after landing or before shutting off the drone, otherwise you will lose your video. Uh, by the way, the video is, there is no SD card recording on this drone. Video is recorded strictly to your phone over Wi-Fi. Okay, just letting you know that. No SD card capability. This button in the center here turns on or turns off the obstacle avoidance system. So you can turn it on, and if it's, it starts acting screwy, and it did it to me one, one or two occasions, you can turn it off by pressing it one more time. Uh, buttons on the right, these are trim buttons. It does have trim buttons, and you can turn off the LED lights. This has very bright LED lights. I'm just showing you that real close here, but you can turn them off to save battery power by a quick press of the center button here. A uh, long press of this button, be careful on that one, is emergency stop. That will turn off the motors and the drone will just drop out of the sky. You want that in case this ends up in a um, tree or flips upside down. You don't want to burn out those motors. Press that emergency stop button and that will stop the motors from overheating. And I mentioned the flip button there. And finally, on off switch right there. So that is the KF616 from KF Plan. Let's take it out. Or actually, let's take it down into my basement first and fly it indoors. And then uh, afterwards, we'll take it outdoors and see how it flies outdoors. So I hope you enjoy these flights. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And welcome to the indoor flight of the KF-616. Okay, to turn this on, all we need to do is press and hold this button here for a few seconds until the lights start flashing. Then put it on a flat level surface. Then turn on the drone like so or the controller like so, and it automatically binds to the drone. We don't need to do an up, down on the throttle. Now before we take off, we can calibrate the gyros. And to do that, you bring both sticks down and to the right like so, and that calibrates the gyros to help you get it. A more level flight. Now I'm gonna get down on my knees here for the takeoff so we can see it up close. But for automatic takeoff, or before we take off, let's turn on that video recording by pressing and holding the video record button 
and this light up in the upper left corner here should be turning yellow it didn't I think I took a photo instead so let's press it again and hold it oh I have not connected the Wi-Fi yet hold on while I do such folks I need to connect the drones Wi-Fi signal which is coming from the drone to my phone so hold on while I do that folks okay this is the RCFPV app available in Google Play um, all I did folks again I connected the drones Wi-Fi signal to my phone okay and then I opened the app and that's how you do such with these Wi-Fi flyers I'm gonna hit start and it's recording right now or no it's not recording yet um, but we do have FPV video but to start recording I need to press and hold this uh, video button right here holding it down and it blinked down there and we get a yellow video signal on the screen as you can see here that tells us we are recording okay for automatic takeoff all I need to do is press and hold this button here or just press this button real quick takeoff button and it's drifting to the right let's bring it back over toward us here I'm going to adjust the trim we want it backward and to the right to counter that and now we have a nice steady hover let me go one left let's see if that stables it stabilizes it two left going over by my Tesla coils let's bring it back toward us turn it turn it go forward a bit and say how do you like my shirt today folks <laughs> there I am there I am and my peppers they're still doing fine <laughs> so okay it hovers quite nicely once you trim it once you trim it it's drifting to the right a bit now I had previously turned on that emitter up here okay turned on the obstacle avoidance I'm going to show you what happens folks uh, with mine mine seems to be uh, defective so I'm only going to do a little bit of obstacle avoidance but watch what happens when I turn it on it goes into this drift to the left and it'll keep on drifting to the left until it crashes okay so I'm going to try to turn that off Maybe I got a hold there. It's turned it off, I think. Okay, I'm gonna stop that video recording too, just in case um, that had something to do with it. But I'm gonna bring that back over to the pad. We'll put it right back on the pad. Hopefully, that drifting is going to stop. But every time I turn on the obstacle avoidance, at least indoors, it drifts to the left. It might be something to do with my uh, pepper plants here. The lights on the pepper plants might be on the same frequency as that I don't know but when we go outdoors to fly I'll try that obstacle avoidance again okay starting the video recording one more time and making sure that it's recording and it is and pressing automatic takeoff okay so yeah I'll try that uh, obstacle avoidance when we're outdoors but in the meantime let's see how this thing flies indoors it's actually kind of stable nice and stable actually yeah not too bad not too bad at all try to ride going that way let's try a higher rate second rate oh much faster whoa <laughs> much faster more for outdoor flying that's second rate but let's try that let's try okay while we're here let's try a flip bringing it back over here toward me a bit no uh, not too high flip whoa <laughs> okay how about a forward flip bring it closer forward flip no don't do forward flips it just does roll flips how about backward flip no. try backward flip no so more or less just right and left flips <laughs> it's okay I like uh, right and left flips especially when I'm flying outdoors okay let's see how its maneuverability is going around in circles not too bad and let's try it the other way <laughs> be careful in there now uh, one of the features we got on here is headless mode headless mode should be on which means 
Okay, right now, it doesn't matter which direction this drone is pointed, it's pointed toward me now. If I push forward, that's always forward, this is always back. This is always right, and that's always left. In fact, we can actually do pirouettes. We should be able to do pirouettes. See? Hey, by the way, the altitude holder in this thing is pretty rock solid. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, normally the altitude holder in these things are not good. Okay, turn it off headless mode. Let's try that one key return. And I want to demonstrate one key return. We'll go over here, and I'm going to press that return button. Holding it down, and it flies backwards. Okay, let's go over there, turn it sideways. One key return. Oh, that wasn't right. It was just flying backwards. Let's try that again. Yeah, it just flies backwards in one key return. So <laughs> it doesn't quite work out the way you think it would work. But, okay, you want to run it again? Uh, uh, where are you going? Over by my Xbox. I was just playing GTA 5. <laughs> but, okay. Oh, there we go, crashing it. I was going to try to do a high speed turn around the pillar here, and that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> okay, so let's go over and get this drone behind the hot tub, which I have never used yet, folks. Never turned this thing on. <laughs> The reason being, I don't want to clean it. <laughs> so, okay, let's try to, oh, the camera's pointed down too. Let me point that camera back up from the, that little tussle that we just had. And automatic takeoff again. Do I need to do any more calibration? No. Seems to be good. Okay, well, let's turn it around and continue flying. Um, relatively stable, you know, most beginners should be able to fly it. It would have been nice if they had put that um, optical flow in the, in the belly there, that belly camera down here, <laughs> but it's okay. It's a 30, what, $33 drone, I guess, with one battery. What do you, you know, you can't expect too much. <laughs> okay, I raised it up a little, but yeah, again, the altitude hold is working great on this. Working real good on this. Saying hello. Forward. Trying to give it a little bit of forward. Okay, it's drifting up a bit. I'm getting close to that ceiling. You get that weird um, pressure change that causes these altitude old drones to get sucked into the ceiling. But Okay, going to higher rate. Let's try second rate. Going up a bit higher. Uh, not bad. Has turned these little pirouette turns quite nicely indoors in a very small area. <laughs> Went up a bit higher. Raising the throttle up. <laughs> so that was working okay. Bring it back over here. Try in the other direction. Went forward. Oh, going too low, too low to the ground. Let's go around the um, that. Yeah, these prop guards really aren't, aren't protecting very well. <laughs> Just direct. I put them on, but uh, it could be better. It only protects in certain areas. As you can guess, you know, forward and backward on the, those arms, those props are going to hit. Okay, we're starting to get a light flashing here. And we all know what that means. That means the battery's getting low. Battery's getting low on this thing. But, well, yeah, it's a good learn to fly drone. I, I guess this would be good, especially outdoors. I got a feeling this could be a great flyer outdoors, and that's the end of the, the flight time. And now let's stop that video recording. So that's the indoor flight of this thing. I'll try stopping it there, making sure that stopped. So that's about, I don't know, about six minutes, six, seven minutes of flight time to be expected. And that just more confirmation that is not a 2,000 milliamp per hour battery in this drone. I don't care what that says on it. <laughs> but OK, let's take this outdoors now and see how it flies there. So hope you enjoy the second part of this flight. 
Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to the outdoor flight of the KF-616. Uh, notice that I have removed the prop guards from the drone because we'll be, again, flying outdoors. We don't need them, especially we don't want them to end up, if this drone ends up in one of the local trees here, it'll be a Christmas tree ornament for years to come. <laughs> okay, so to start this up, we hold, press and hold the on-off switch until the lights start to flash. And put it on the ground, like so. And then turn on the transmitter and we have automatic bind and again the next thing I need to do is connect the Wi-Fi signal from the drone to my phone and then open up its app so hold on while I do that folks okay this is the Wi-Fi signal from the drone and I'm going to start recording by pressing the record button here holding it and making sure we got yellow and the counter is counting and to start let's see if I can okay calibrate at the drivers first and then do automatic takeoff and I calibrated them on a slope. <laughs> I am going to need to adjust the trim. I shouldn't have calibrated on that slope. It's moving, see? So, right, right trim, and then back trim. There we go. Let's bring it back over toward us. So that's how the trim buttons work, folks. You rapid press in the opposite direction, it drifts. Okay, which way is it drifting now? It's not drifting at all. Okay, so I got good trim. Well, it's drifting to the right a little bit. So one one click on that right trim stopped that. Okay, let's try out that. I'm coming down a little lower too. Let's try that obstacle avoidance. See, see if it drifts. Pressing it. Obstacle avoidance is on. It's not drifting like indoors. Let's let me get in front of it and see if it bounces off of me. seems to. How about this way? Yep. So the obstacle avoidance is working outdoors. There must have been something indoors. You know what it is, folks? My grow lights. <laughs> my grow lights on my um, pepper plants. That's the problem. But it's working now. <laughs> obstacle avoidance. Okay, let's go to higher rate. Third rate. Highest rate. Let's turn off obstacle avoidance because I th think, yeah. When you turn it on obstacle avoidance, it automatically stays in beginner rate. Okay. So let's show that. Right now I'm in high rate. You can see it wiggling like that. But turning on obstacle avoidance, and we go right to real low rate. So it flies real slow in obstacle avoidance mode. Trimming it up a bit. Okay. So now we are in high rate. With that in mind, let's go, we haven't shown what, we're going back to low rate, going up high to show the camera. That's its camera, folks. Trimming it back a bit, going up a bit higher. And rotating around the area. Slow rotate. It's actually fly not too bad. Although the camera view is somewhat zoomed in, I can see. Coming back down. This is actually a nice flyer. Good for beginners. Again, you know, in the $30, $40 price range, hello. <laughs> Don't expect, you know, cinemata cinema cinematography. But it is not a bad little flyer for this little for a little drone like this. Okay, while well, we got power, fresh battery power, let's try to Let's bring it up closer and try a flip. That's a right flip. And a left flip. <laughs> and go into higher rate. Third rate. The reason being, I want to see if we can do acrobatics with this thing. With that, especially with that flip. Kind of. <laughs> Come in the other direction. <laughs> the flips are just a little bit too slow for acrobatics. Let's try funnels. Now you know, this is not a bad little drone for 30, you know, in the $34 price range that it's at. It's actually quite nice. And again, these drones are not meant, are meant for just, actually, let me just say, they're meant for you to learn the controls of a drone. The throttle, the yaw, the pitch, the roll, and how to use them. And they 
for that purpose, they're not too bad. This is not a bad little drone at all. Very responsive. Now, as a beginner, you're going to crash a lot. And you're going to do that no matter what drone you have. And do you want to do that in a drone that costs a couple hundred dollars or one that costs 30 to 40 dollars? That's the idea behind this, folks. So, don't poo poo these cheap little toy drones, is what I'm trying to tell you. They're not bad. Going up a bit higher. Let's try that obstacle avoidance again. Yeah, it's weird. It wouldn't work indoors. How about from the back? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it bounced off me. It won't work indoors, but outdoors it's okay. No, it won't work if you got LED lights. And those were my LED grow lights. And, they, and this drone saw those. And that's why it was crashing indoors. And that's the flight time too, folks. Not a long flight time. Again, I really doubt that that is a 2,000 milliamp hour battery stopping the video recording. I have to do it manually. I really doubt that is a 2,000 milliamp hour battery because it's not. <laughs> but all in all, it is a nice flyer. Great for beginner pilots to learn the basics, especially learning the controls. Um, and the camera's not the greatest in the world, but it works. And the LED optical flow system works. <laughs> it's just that if you got LED lights in your house, and a lot of people do these days, this detects them. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you're Zach and Bonky indoors, turn off those LED lights that you may have operating in the house. So. Okay, it's Quadcopter 101. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.